We welcome you here on this beautiful spring afternoon to this uh, dedication of this beautiful building, which I'm sure you are as thrilled as I am to be a part of this fine occasion. Those of us here have a particular interest or association with the Utah Technical College at Salt Lake. I know there are many in the audience uh, with particular interests. Uh, there are former student body presidents, uh, members of the advisory council of the college, many of the faculty and staff and others who have served and dedicated much to this college. My name is Lyle Campbell and I have been asked to conduct this afternoon for the Utah Technical College Advisory Council. We will start the program with an invocation by Steve Camp, who is a second year student in the building construction trades, after which our president, J.L. Nelson, whom I'm sure all of you know without further introduction, will give us welcoming remarks. Steve. Our Father in heaven, we wish to express thanks this day for this wonderful new building that we have here. We're thankful for its completion and the use that, that we get from it. We're thankful for all the work and uh, effort that went into its planning and construction and for all those who helped and make it a reality. We're thankful for our many blessings, Father, and we're thankful for uh, the privilege of being able to work and learn how to work through facilities like this and through schools like this and for the satisfaction and, and pride that we can, can come to have by uh, doing a job well and learning how to do it. We're thankful, Father, for for those people who have uh, come here today to speak to us and we pray that thou will be with them and uh, help them to say and do those things which will be pleasing unto thee. We pray that thou will bless all those who use this facility and keep them safe at all times and bless all those that uh, come to school here and and learn that they may go out into the world of work and and use their skills and knowledge uh, in their life. These things we pray for and give thee thanks for in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the wonderful privileges of being a college chief is that every now and again you have the opportunity to welcome a very distinguished group of individuals to some function on campus. Today that's my privilege. The dedication of a new building on campus such as this beautiful new construction trades building continues to be a very heartwarming experience for me. It signifies a great deal of cooperation, interest, and planning on the part of numerous individuals and agencies. This new building is a gratifying expansion of a college that has grown year by year, step by step, until it has become really one of the outstanding technical colleges of the nation. You know, this is the third major building that we have completed on this campus in the last six years. And those six years represent a period of outstanding growth and development, both from a capital facilities point of view and also from the point of view of, of enrollments and student numbers. Completion of the Construction Trades Building allows this college to move all of its major programs from the downtown campus or the old laundry here to this beautiful Redwood Road campus. Now in this building, we will house and are housing now most of these programs and the rest will be here soon. Building construction, electricity, brick masonry, apparel manufacturing, upholstery, major appliance repair, small engine mechanics, and the apprenticeship programs. 
They're the primary courses that are housed in this particular stu structure. Now, most of those have been housed at the downtown facility for the past several years, either at the downtown facility or in a rented facility off campus. And with a new building like this, it's inevitable that our thoughts go back to the good old days. Can you remember when the first home of this college was the old Troy Laundry Building on 4th South and 6th East, which we shared space with the laundry and a dry cleaning establishment there? I remember when the operational appropriation of this institution was $275,000 for the biennium of 1947-49. Boy, how times have changed. The operational budget at this college next year will exceed $7 million. The first year the college operated, there was a student body, a total accumulated enrollment for the year of 1,250 people. Today, we serve 6,500 each quarter. During this particular time, too, we've changed our name three times. We first occupied this building in 1967. We turned under the farmland to sprout well-trained people in vocational technical education. I remember when we ceremoniously pulled down a, a large barn, which was located almost in this spot, pulled down by the student body to make way for the administration building and a recreational facility which was on this particular spot. Um, I remember when we had to heat the heating plant while it was waiting for buildings to be constructed on the campus so that we could fire up the boilers. Well this construction trades building and the new equipment which is in this building cost in excess of three million five hundred thousand dollars. Now the total cost of all the buildings on the campuses here at Utah Technical College, parking lots, recreational areas, student union building, all of those things, now the total cost would exceed $15 million. Two and a half million dollars of that has come from state or non-state funds, and by that I mean it has come from student body funds. But you know, growth does have its drawbacks. I remember when we were at the old laundry building, the walls were very thin and the petitions were eight feet high and the noise could travel over the petitions very well. At that particular time, I knew everything that was going on on campus. <laughs> but with this new building, the walls are thicker and clear to the ceiling. My office is removed. Boy, we've sure severed a communications media there. Well, other situations have made their marks around this campus like the lake that uh, used to farm after rainstorms over in the, the administration building parking lot. You know, our buildings and ground supervisor actually used to fish that parking lot. <laughs> I don't think he ever caught anything. <laughs> At least uh, if he did, I never saw him eat anything that he caught. And I remember when uh, we dedicated the technology building across the concourse there beautiful new building and uh, when we dedicated that we were uh, going to uh, have a big demonstration so we erected a sign entitled technology moves on the only problem was when we threw the switch we blew out the whole power supply <laughs> <clears throat> well now seriously I certainly hope that we haven't reached a long, flat plateau here at Utah Technical College. But you should know that there are no additional buildings on the planning board. But you should also know that there are several additional buildings in the master plan. I hope we aren't celebrating today a building that marks the end of physical facility growth on this campus because as much and perhaps more will be expected of us in the future as has been amassed in the past. The enrollments at this college are expected to climb to 
over 8,000 students by 1985. Now, hopefully, the planning will continue for the future of this college. And we should do it now. Doing it now reminds me of the big businessman who sought to inspire more effort among his employees, and so he placed signs around his business that read, do it now. Some, sometime later, a friend of his uh, said to uh, the businessman, how's your campaign going? He said, uh, it's working, but not exactly the manner in which I'd planned. He said, shortly after I put up those signs, he said, 20 people ask for raises. Three of my supervisors got punched in the nose, and my accountant absconded with $50,000. <laughs> well, that, uh, to elaborate on the kind of do it now uh, that I'm talking about, let me share a thought with you from one of John Dewey's essays. John Dewey said, with the advent of democracy and modern industrial conditions, it's impossible to foretell definitely just what civilization will be like 20 years from now. Well, Dewey wrote that back in 1897. Now, contemplating the changes that have been made since 1897, 20 years would be an eternity. Today's advances are, are happening so fast that businessmen don't know in some situations what their employees will actually be doing six months from now. Well, continually, the great challenge is to match the supply with the demand. Each year, jobs are eliminated through technology. But at the same time that technology creates new jobs, at the same time we eliminate jobs, technology creates new jobs. Now, Utah Technical College is keeping up with that advancement, and I'd like to assure you that our graduates are finding jobs. A recent survey of students who completed programs at the college last year shows 92% of those students are employed in their fields of study or in a related field. Now, that's an admirable record. Only 1% of them are unemployed are otherwise not working. Now, more, much more, will be expected of this college in the future. Let's plan for these expectations now. Let's not remember this building as the last vestige of the foresight that has been so keen in the past decade. You know, the vocationally trained people of the past would be envious of the, of the surroundings on this campus. I'm sure I can see a couple of former student body presidents here in the audience today, and I'm sure that they're envious of the surroundings on this campus, particularly of this new building with its magnificent labs, class, classrooms, and laboratories. Well, today, in extending our greetings to each and every one of you, I'd also like to say congratulations to Cannon Construction Company, the builders of this very fine structure. Congratulations to the architects, the Board of Regents, the State Board for Vocational Education, the State Building Board for creating this fine, be beautiful building, and congratulations to our very fine staff and faculty who helped plan this building and who will operate it and who will maintain it. We all hope that those who use the building and learn from it will return their gratitude by applying their craftsmanship on their jobs and living meaningful, productive, and satisfying lives. We're very, very grateful that all of you could share this Red Letter Day here at Utah Technical College. Greetings, and we hope you enjoy your visit here to Utah Tech. We'll now listen to this madrigal group. <clears throat>
glory shall be revealed as And all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. it. And all flesh shall see it together. And all flesh, and all flesh and shall see it We thank the Olympus Madrigals for that beautiful music. It must be great to be young and sound like that. The Madrigals are directed by Glenn L. Slight, who was un unable to be with us, but uh, they were led today by a student director. Thank you also, Jay, for your remarks. I think there are none of us here today, probably, who would regret seeing that lake reappear if it was accompanied by one of those rainstorms we used to get. We'll now proceed with the program with the introduction of special guests and a presentation by the superintendent of buildings and grounds here at the college, Joseph S. Johnson. Joe has probably had more to do with the actual accomplishment of this building than anyone else here on the campus, and I'm sure this is a satisfying and happy day for him. Following Joe's presentation, we will hear remarks by Joan L. Burnside, chairperson of the Utah State Board of Education, and although not on your program, following Joan, we will hear remarks by Dr. T.H. Bell. Dr. Bell is the Commissioner of Utah System of Higher Education and a former United States Commissioner of Education. We will then be favored with another uh, musical selection, hopefully, and we'll proceed to that point on the program. I thought when the president was talking there and said when we were on the downtown campus that he knew everything that was going on, I don't see that things have changed much out here. I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I see it. <clears throat> I'm pleased to uh, introduce the individuals that have played a major role in the completion of this building. I'm sorry that uh, the building board members, unless they've come in since I sat down, could not make it. I would like to uh, introduce uh, two members of the building board staff, Wilson Harris. Would you stand, please, Wilson? Wilson is the chief inspector for the Salt Lake area, and LeGrand Allen, he was the resident inspector for this building. Thank you. <coughs> I think it was in uh, the 72 session of the legislature that they granted an authorization for planning money for this building. And uh, Paul Gunderson and myself and many others developed the planning guide. And in September of 72, the building board appointed uh, architectural associates 
which I think at that time was uh, Monroe, Winburn, and Lemoyne, to design the building. We do have Bill Monroe, would you stand, Bill, of Architectural Associates, and Bill Hoster. I think we could refer to Bill as the project architect. Uh, Bill was actually the principal he, uh, in the design of this and did follow the building through to completion. And I uh, have a lot of respect for both of these gentlemen. I think uh, Bill Hoster is, uh, uh, I don't know how he can keep all of this. He really didn't need a set of plans because I know when Kent would ask him questions, uh, he had the answer right on top of his head for even Kent had to uh, refer to the plans at some times. Thank you, gentlemen. Would like to have you uh, recognize Paul Gunderson over there. Will you stand, Paul? Paul and I, uh, like I said, uh, worked on the planning guide and uh, did uh, follow the building through uh, construction. And I uh, want to uh, thank you for all the help. And really, Paul put in a lot of time. And uh, he's the type of guy that uh, uh, we'll get right to the bottom of something and stick with it and put a lot of time in and I do really appreciate his help I do want to recognize a couple of gentlemen over there. They're hiding in the background that had a lot to do with the building usually you recognize a contractor and the subs go uh, without any attention We have uh, the team that put this building together. I think if uh, if one could have picked all the, the general and the subs we'd have the same group that we have here if you had your choice and of course these are all low bidders here uh, but we're really uh, really fortunate to <laughs> <laughs> but down here we have Mike Tooley would you stand Mike Mike's with A&B plumbing Mike has done several buildings on campus here and uh, tremendous craftsman and we have Rex Kuhn sitting back there by Teresa wave your hand Rex Rex is with M&H uh, Electrical and uh, has been with the building since it started and he says he's not leaving, he and Mike both would like to stay right with us here, but uh, <clears throat> this was, uh, gotta get my dates together here, the 75 legislature in their bonding program gave us 4.2 million for the construction of this building. We had the plans ready for bidding and it was bid on June 10th of 1975 and Cannon Construction, like Ranch just stated, was low bidder. <laughs> and uh, they did start construction July 1 of 1975. So I would like you to be recognized, Ranch. This Ranch Kimball of Cannon Construction, the president of Cannon Construction, George Williams, project coordinator, and Charlie Griffins. I think is a project coordinator also. Good uh, tea drinker at least. <laughs> and then the superintendent on the job was Kent Rowley. Kent, would you come up for just a moment here? <laughs> I do want you to know this gentleman. This is probably one of the finest craftsmen, finest superintendent I've had the pleasure of working with and I'm sure others feel the same. We have had some tremendous superintendents on the campus. Ed Cannon, and I don't know if it's any relation, Ed Cannon was superintendent on the construction trades, and those that know Ed Cannon have a lot of respect for him. And another one I think that everyone that knows has a lot of respect for, and Kent says he's the greatest superintendent in the state of Utah, is Huck Polson. Huck was the superintendent on the technology building. But I think that we had one of the finest or the finest superintendent of any uh, job uh, that one could have. So we did discuss this with, uh, with uh, uh, the uh, <laughs> Associated General Contractors and it was decided that we would jointly sponsor a plaque, a presentation to the outstanding supervisor in the state and we hope that this will be a continuing thing jointly sponsored by Utah Tech and the AGC. So we have this plaque and I would like to read the, it's inscribed on it. It's a beautiful plaque. Awarded to Kent Rowley, Superintendent, Cannon Construction Company, in recognition for his outstanding professional contribution in the supervising the building of the Construction Trades Building, Utah Technical College at Salt Lake. Jointly presented by Utah Technical College 
and the Utah Chapter Associated General Contractors, April 23, 1977. Congratulations. <laughs> There's too many people to thank for something like this. And there's something that should be said about uh, two special people on this campus, and there's many of them. But uh, when we were finishing this thing, I don't think we'd have made it without Joe Johnson here and Paul Gunderson. As we stayed up nights, all of us, uh, scrubbing floors and whatever it took to put this thing together to say that it could be opened January the 3rd, which was, uh, I'm not sure it was open, but <laughs> Joe said it was. Uh, like Joe's mentioned, I think the building board and the architects, of course everybody I work with, uh, appreciate this and uh, they all know why we got it I guess it took everybody not just me like Joe said I appreciate it thanks thank you I only need those to see President Nelson, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I extend to you greetings from the State Board of Education. The State Board of Education, by law, serves as the State Board for Vocational Education. In 1947, this school was created by the Utah State Legislature and was titled the Salt Lake Area Vocational School. A governing board was called the Area Board Control, established the policies, that governed the operation of the school. Two years later, it came under the jurisdiction of the State Board for Vocational Education. And a decade later, the school became known as the Salt Lake Trade Technical Institute. The institution, now known as the Utah Technical College at Salt Lake, has 103 acres of land and serves over 8,000 students and is the largest institution of its type in Utah. This institution is a vocational <coughs> institution. Such a college is the best chance for citizens, an only chance for some, and a second chance for those who have tried other educational programs and have given up to take their place as a productive, contributive citizen. It is a comprehensive institution which permits each individual to be educated to the level of his highest potential. It accepts the responsibility to serve all persons, regardless of their social, cultural, or educational background, with relevant, low-cost, high-quality education. Recently, the State Board adopted some policies which outline the general characteristics of vocational education. A few of those principles are as follows. Vocational education is for all individuals, regardless of sex, creed, religion, race, geographical location, or physical, emotional, or mental handicaps who desire such training for employment purposes. Vocational education utilizes advisory committees and true public involvement in developing, conducting, and evaluating programs. This supports the board's first priority of public involvement. Vocational education supports the concept that an individual's occupation is a contributing force to the continuity and happiness of that individual's life. All work is honorable. Vocational education is designed to prepare people from em for employment and is justified on the basis of jobs available for the community, state, and nation. Vocational education provides for the development of positive work attitudes, sellable skills, and usable knowledge related to employment. Vocational education provides open entry, 
open exit enrollment processes, and performance-based curriculum. Vocational education is based upon the changing requirements in business, industry, agriculture, and health occupations by a systematic assessment of cultural, social, and economic requirements. Exalted activity will have neither good plumbing nor good philosophy. Neither its pipes or its philosophy will hold water." End of quote. I want to stress the cooperative nature of the Utah Technical College. They are following the State Board for Vocational Education's first priority in public involvement. There are many advisory committees who work to keep this college current and dynamic. This is particularly true of the organizations backing the building trades. There is great cooperation between unions, professional organizations, employers, and the college. The building construction trades are greatly helped by this new facility, and in particular, the apprentice programs of sheet metal, plumbing, painting, carpentry, and electricity. There are about 350 apprentices from local industries in the buildings in the evening. The school serves 2,000 apprentices throughout the college in its evening programs. For your information, about 300 members of the College Advisory Committee with 5, 10, 15, 20 or more years are being honored tonight for the service they provide in keeping Utah Technical College up to date, a viable institution. The State Board for Vocational Education is proud of the Utah Technical College, its administration and faculty, and especially the high caliber of the students who graduate with skills which prepare them for honorable work. This new building being dedicated today will give further assistance to meet this objective. The Board of Vocational Education looks forward to continued expansion of this campus as this institution accepts the growing challenge of meeting the demands of society as it serves the needs of students. I'd like to uh, tell all of you, as you notice that I'm not on the printed program, and uh, as you survey the length of a meeting, you size up the number of speakers that are there, and here I am as an interloper. At the time that uh, uh, this uh, program was uh, discussed and some other activities planned for this evening, I thought I was going to be out of town, and then it developed that I would uh, be able to attend this uh, uh, meeting uh, because the time that I had to uh, leave uh, for a commitment this evening was moved back. And so I'm on, uh, I'm on the uh, program, I think, a bit by, uh, by bureaucratic uh, mix-up. Uh, the uh, uh, newspaper called this morning and wanted to know if they could have a copy of my speech. And uh, I knew in talking to Brian Gardner that I had uh, expressed a, a concern that I wouldn't be able to be here, uh, Brian. And so I quickly thought, well, am I on the program out there? And has my, has my secretary called back and said, well, uh, the schedule has changed and so uh, Ted can make it. And so then uh, she called out to find out about uh, uh, whether or not I was on the program. I don't know the other side of the story, but I imagine at that time, knowing how polite and considerate Jay Nelson is, that he thought, well, he's not on the program, but we're not going to hurt his feelings. And so they said, yes, uh, uh, come on out and, and give an address. And so uh, through the intimidation, Jerry Silver here representing the Deseret News, uh, the press, you're uh, uh, inflicted with an additional uh, uh, speaker. One of the things I should tell you is that uh, you've heard the, the corny uh, advice about giving a speech that you stand up and you speak up and you and you shut up. Uh, Jay was uh, a bit uh, uh, diplomatic, but he did try to help me to try to understand about uh, the latter part, uh, when to shut up. And he, he urged me uh, to, uh, uh, to be brief, uh, whether I could be profound or witty, 
at least if I could indulge in some brevity, uh, he thought that would be all right. I should comment to you seriously that, uh, that I think this is a, uh, a great uh, uh, landmark occasion for this great institution. I was going to trace some of the history of, the, of this campus, including, uh, Jay, the time when we did uh, pull down the, uh, the old barn building out here. I remember the cloud of dust. Animals had occupied that building before we uh, pulled it down in that great ceremony. A huge uh, rope and all the students here to, uh, to jerk it down. And I'd have to admit, I stood around thinking, well, this is going to be a, a strange flop. That building's not all going to come down in, in one great splash. But it did in a cloud of dust. I still think of it, and I can still be sneezing. And that was the time when we initiated this campus. And I remember, as you do, Jay, the long time that the lonesome heating plant uh, sat out here. And uh, I share your concern about the fact that there's no more uh, uh, construction money on the docket for this institution at this time. I see uh, Mark uh, Nichols uh, back here. Uh, Mark uh, used to tutor me in vocational education when I was uh, state uh, uh, superintendent. And he certainly uh, battled for this institution, and I want to pay tribute to you, Mark, and express my, my thanks for your, uh, your being here. <laughs> Mark has a theory about social gravity in education that I'll never forget, and it's a lesson I'm still trying to follow, Mark, in my uh, 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 new responsibilities. You know, we have a family of nine colleges and universities in the Utah system of higher education. And one of the things that we're constantly saying in my office is what a great manager Jay Nelson is. He's on top of things. And I, I join you, Joe, when I say uh, uh, notwithstanding the, the uh, loss of, of thin walls in the old laundry building, I still think he knows everything that's going on around here. And he certainly uh, operates a, a fine institution. His reports are accurate. The information he gives to us and his responses is always uh, right on the, on the button. I might indicate, indicate to Kent Rowley that the Associated General Contractors uh, have been in to see me, and they want a, uh, a course uh, offered, a program offered, and a college degree granted in, uh, in construction uh, management. And they described how complex it is to carry out a job like you have. And I think they must have neglected you when they didn't introduce you as Dr. Kent Rowley, because I'm sure to, to have the skills that the AGC described to me, you must have at least the, the PhD degree in, in that area. And so insist on them calling you doctor from now on after that award. The, uh, this new construction trades building, in, in my view, uh, is, is long overdue. It's going to add to uh, not only this institution, but Utah's capacity uh, to, uh, to build and grow. Uh, the construction industry has been a vital and essential part of our economy for uh, uh, as far back as I can remember any connection uh, with this state. It's always been uh, one of the important uh, parts of the economic engine of this state. And certainly this facility is going to help us uh, a great deal in, uh, in uh, uh, seeing that we provide the kind of, uh, of skills that are necessary to keep the, this uh, industry uh, moving. I'm impressed with, uh, with the campuses in Utah on all of the, all of the uh, uh, nine uh, uh, college campuses. We have beautiful buildings that are well constructed. And I think that part of the reason for that is we've had an outstanding state building board. And I certainly want to add uh, uh, my uh, tribute to that that was, that was expressed to uh, Wilson and LeGrand here representing the State Building Board. I think we've had uh, uh, good construction, quality construction, uh, aesthetically uh, beautiful, uh, functionally adequate uh, uh, buildings. And uh, this uh, uh, plant here is certainly uh, uh, no exception in, in that regard. So it's my... Uh, uh, privilege to be here and to join you as we as we celebrate the the dedication of this uh, new building
and to express my congratulations uh, to, the, uh, to President Nelson and his staff, particularly to Joe Johnson for, for all of the work that he's done in planning this, uh, this beautiful campus, and uh, to all others that have, uh, have had a part in, uh, in building uh, this fine institution in this uh, beautiful uh, uh, setting here. And I hope in my uh, uh, capacity of my new job that I can lend the kind of support and assistance that this great college needs as it moves along and, uh, and copes with the challenges that it's going to, going to face in the future. We've had outstanding planning on this campus uh, thanks to the uh, good leadership that we've had here. And I hope we can play a part in that in, uh, in uh, uh, seeing the institution continue to grow and, and progress. And thank you very much for this opportunity to express these remarks. Thank you. Hallelujah, amen, amen, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen, amen, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen, amen, hallelujah, amen. Oh, Judah, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Rejoice, I shall cheer up in songs divine. With cherubim and seraphim, harmonious join. With cherubim and seraphim, harmonious join. Hallelujah, amen, amen, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen, amen, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen, amen, hallelujah, amen. Rejoice, 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 rej
tremendous speed, as it were, in accomplishing his objectives. As I think back, Jay, of those days, and then look at this beautiful campus now, and recognize the strength of the students who are being trained here and graduated from this institution each year, I believe that I see the fulfillment of the quotation wherein a writer said, an institution is the length and shadow of its leader. And I think we'd not be dedicating this beautiful building today were it not for the type of leadership which Jay Nelson has given to this college. I know that it's been dedicated, I know that it's been talented, and I know that it's been with a great element of love. I'm grateful that I too am a tradesman, a second generation printer. I'm grateful that I know the word and the work of an apprentice. I learned this very forcibly when as a young man helping to finance my way through university, working as a printer's helper, I became a little bit annoyed at the journeyman in our print shop who would let the ink dry on the plate and dry on the rollers and after it was very, very dry and very difficult to remove, he would then summons me to remove it. <laughs> and as I would wash up the press, I thought to myself, uh, this isn't right. And so I boldly said to him, look, why don't you clean up the presses that you get dirty and I'll clean up the presses that I get dirty. And then he took me aside and said, it's time that we had an understanding concerning who is the journeyman and who is the apprentice. <laughs> and after that little chat, I knew who the apprentice was and determined that I would be a journeyman printer. And I'm happy to say that I fulfilled that objective. When I think of the element of work and the comments of Commissioner Bell and Chairperson Burnsides, and think of the beautiful brickwork that's in this building and having recognized our superintendent of construction, our architects, our builders, I think of the experience that occurred when the great architect Sir Christopher Wren was building a beautiful cathedral. A gentleman came by and saw three men working on the cathedral. Each was carrying a wheelbarrow, as it were, filled with hod. And he said to the first one, what are you doing, my good man? He said, can't you see, I'm carrying hod. He said to the second one, what are you doing? He said, I'm working for six shillings a day. And then he turned to the third and said, and what are you doing, sir? And the man paused, stepped aside from the wheelbarrow, looked at his questioner and said, I am helping the great architect, Sir Christopher Wren, erect this mighty cathedral to our God. That's the vision of a Jay Nelson. He knows that as he works with students, he works with the handiwork of God. Ernie Pyle, the war correspondent who gave his life in the far off Pacific, used to say that morale really is the key factor in an organization's success. And he then went on to declare that morale depends upon two factors. One, confidence in your leaders, and two, pride in your outfit. Now the student body here has always had confidence in Jay Nelson. But remember back in those days, Jay, there was not yet established the pride in one's outfit. And it was a thrilling day for me when I began to see stickers in the back windows of automobiles advertising proudly to the world that the driver of this car and the owner of this car is a student at Utah Technical College, Salt Lake. I believe that that pride, which has been nurtured and husbanded by Jay Nelson, has brought to pass the great spirit of our college here today. It was Henry Ford, another craftsman, who said that an educated man is not one who has trained his mind to remember a few dates in history. Until a man has learned to think, he is not an educated man no matter how many college degrees he may have after his name. Thinking is the hardest work a man can do. I believe that's true. And I believe that we can develop thinkers here on this campus. And it was John Ruskin who paid a tribute to builders, the great British essayist, who declared, when we build, let us think that we build forever. 
And let it not be for present use or present delight alone, but let it be such work that generations to follow will thank us. And as we lay brick upon brick, let us remember that future people will say, this our fathers did for us. And I believe that's the foundation that we're building here. As I looked around the campus and entered the building today, I had a vision of the great joy that can come to the students who enter here each year and who come under the wise leadership of your faculty and administrative leaders. And I should like to say that I believe this institution is a great credit to the state of Utah and to our community here in Salt Lake and that the young people who graduate and who go forward in the world to exercise their skills in a host of vocations will continue to bring credit upon our state and upon the accomplishments of those who preside in this institution of learning. We're proud of the school. We're proud of the faculty. We're proud of the student body. We're proud of you, President Nelson. And now it will be my opportunity to lead us all in a prayer of thanksgiving to our Heavenly Father as we dedicate this beautiful structure. May we bow our heads in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we assemble on this beautiful spring afternoon, a lovely day for building, and extend unto thee the gratitude of our hearts for the workmanship which has gone into this beautiful edifice, for the care, for the talent, for the vision, for the skill, which have been made manifest in erecting this mighty building. Heavenly Father, wilt thou bless all who come here to learn, that each may apply himself or herself, grant that each may learn in addition to a skill or a trade how to be a better person, how to love thee, and how to love one's neighbor. And let us remember that amidst these beautiful surroundings, the student is all important, and it is for the student's benefit that these dollars have been spent, that this building might be erected. We are aware, Heavenly Father, of the importance with which thou hast looked upon the building trade. We remember that thou didst save the world by commanding a noble leader, Noah, to build an ark with his own hands. We remember how grateful thou wast when Solomon constructed the mighty temple unto thee. And we recognize, too, that thou didst teach thy beloved son the skill of a carpenter, noble work for which we are grateful. Now, Heavenly Father, as we come together today, we ask thy blessings upon those whose hands and minds and efforts have helped to bring to reality the dream and vision of this construction trades building. And in behalf of all assembled here and those who have governance over this institution, I dedicate this construction trades building of the Utah Technical College at Salt Lake for the grand purposes for which it has been erected. Wilt thou let thy spirit be here? Wilt thou let thy light shine upon all who enter herein? And wilt thou enable all of us to be better citizens and better children of thee as a result of that which we learn within these walls. Wilt thou protect the structure? Wilt thou watch over it and keep it free from damage of any kind that all of us may be able with pride to look upon this construction trades building and feel that we are a part of the building and a part of this great institution for which we pray in the name of thy son Jesus Christ, amen. amen.